Hello and welcome to a new edition of today's youth. Our guest today is uh, Lujain Deeb. She is a graduate from university in uh, Budapest and uh, her major is international relations. We'll try to know more about Lujain. She is our guest today. Good morning, Lujain. Good morning. How are you? Great. So, uh, Lujain, I was just mentioned that uh, you are a graduate from university in Budapest. Can you tell us more about your experience? Um, okay, so basically I study international relations focused on diplomacy and international cooperation. Um, the reason I went there, it was out of the blue. I, I finished my senior year somewhere else. That's why I decided I wanted to continue abroad. So my experience there was, just to sum it up, it was amazing. It was full of diversity. I met so many people. I, I grew myself. Like I felt like I met with the person I want to be in five years maybe. Um, I can go in, get in depth later, but basically it's just it was full it's it was so enriching because i met people from everywhere around the world and that was exactly what i wanted to do that was the reason i studied international relations not just politics but just because culture wise yes so uh, tell us uh, more about uh, your exchange year in the states and why uh, did you choose uh, this major um my exchange year in the states was back in 2016 to 2017 um, and we were chosen out of like 3,000 people around Egypt and then they chose only 50 students to be able to go. So you apply for yeah. this uh, exchange? Yeah, it's a, culture, it's, a, it's a culture scholarship. So you go there, okay. you stay there with a the host family for a year, you get to learn their culture and then you also introduce yourself. You're basically as an ambassador of Egypt. So you get to be chosen, you take like a year workshop. They actually chose you based on several workshops that you go through and tests and experiments not experiments i'm sorry but like just tests that you go through mm. and then um after like a whole year they choose the 50 that they will be going to the states yes tell me uh, uh, more about uh, these uh, uh, tests and how did you pass uh, these uh, tests okay so basically you were in group mm. like group um tests or not tests i don't know how to put it but it's just group exercises for instance, they ask you how are you going to deal with your money if you live by yourself. Um, they test, they give you like several tastes like chocolate, salt, etc. Mm. And then they ask you, this is how life is. What did you feel when you tasted the chocolate and the salt? And it just it shows you what are the ups and downs you get to see when you live abroad. Um, other were games like card games that th it's a metaphor to show you how you will live there alone in a mm. different culture that like you a different don't family yeah exactly that you go there you don't change how they live you just go there and adapt to how they live and then you learn what they do so it was a card game basically showing you that you need to respect others background culture um that you just don't go and intrude yourself there was it an easy experience or it was um, hard at first <laughs> It had the ups and downs. Like it was for me, it was very significant, and I had it had the most impact on me, honestly. But it had its downs because of, of, obviously you go to a family, um, you don't know who they are, you don't know what they do, um, you get to see how they live because you have to adapt how they live inside their house, the chores. I get to, I got to do things I've never done before in Egypt, like even with my family. So there was so many contradictions between them, but it was still it was still amazing for me. Uh, you said that, that this experience um, uh, helped you to choose international relations as a major. Yeah. Uh, can you explain to us more? Okay, so uh, during my year there, I got chosen to go to a governmental workshop in D.C., the capital. Um, and they chose like 100 out of 700 exchange students from all over the world. It wasn't just Egyptian, it was from everywhere. And then I got to, to go there. And of course, you go and you see the history of the state, you get mm. to see the monuments, etc. And there, there was like a time where you had to go and meet the senators of the state that you were placed in. So I met my senator and representative and I was talking to him normally and I, I found myself asking questions about politics, about how you deal with society, societal issues. And I was just asking him in, de in deep and then he was like, you should actually be a politician, you're really good with it. And that's when I went outside of his office. I was like, okay, I like politics, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study international relations. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, why did you choose Budapest to study international relations in its universities? Um, it came out of nowhere. I was still looking to where, where I'm going to study in Europe. Um, I was touring between Germany or UK, but then I, I remembered I had a friend in Budapest. Yes. So I called him. Yeah. Yeah. He was a friend of mine in college student and I called him and I was like, how is it living there? 
And he was like, it's full of like, it's full of diversity. And again, that was always my goal. I love meeting people from everywhere. Mm. He said, it's very nice living here for student life. The people, everyone you're going to meet, it's they're very nice. So I was like, okay, I'm going to apply. And it just happened. I got accepted and I went. So uh, also, uh, what did you learn from living abroad? Um, I have, I've learned so many things, but first of all is like, how to live by yourself because um, you got to see the world from a different perspective by living yourself without parents without anyone you know of course you get homesick a lot so it's how you t how you tend to deal with the struggles or the the problems you get to see so first you need to learn how to be responsible to be able to surpass so many things and also um, the most important is cultural awareness and, and how to respect others and you get to deal with every single person from all over the world so you have to be able to know what to say what to not say so you were very respective of others um, and just for me I got so many knowledge from everyone I got to learn so many things from them and I got to be the person I am right now I became stronger I feel I knew how to deal with things that maybe not everyone know how to deal with because living abroad is not that easy. <laughs> and uh, what is your advice to uh, young uh, or youths who uh, decide to go and live abroad? Or um, study abroad, maybe? Yeah, I say go for it 100%. My advice is don't let anyone influence you there. Mm. Take your decisions by yourself. You calculate it however you want because this is your life. You, you get to live it there. Don't let anyone ruin it. Don't let even friends ruin it for you. Um, your parents always trust you when you do anything. So talk to your parents about what you're going to do. Take their advice. Those are the only people I advise you to take <laughs> tips from your parents. But just live and don't overthink about what you're doing there. So tell me more, tell me more about the support of your family. Um, my, actually, my family has always been very, very supportive of my decision. They know that I take my studies very serious. And when they found out that I want to study more abroad, I want to be more enriched in whatever I want to do, they were always, go do that, go follow your dreams, because they know at the end that I want to go somewhere and learn. I'll be back to them. <laughs> it's like, my aim is never to leave this country. On the contrary, I go learn and come back to give what I've learned. Yes. Uh, give yours a short break, and uh, we'll be back. Welcome back. Uh, and uh, as uh, I've just mentioned that our guest for today is uh, Lujain Adib and she is still telling us her experience about uh, uh, studying abroad and uh, her major international uh, relations. So uh, Lujain, uh, you participated in MUN or the Modern uh, United Nations. Uh, what did you learn from this experience and uh, uh, does, uh, uh, did it influ influence your decision to uh, study international relations? Um, I've always been to MUN since I was in grade 10 and that mm. was the first experience when I was yes. in my school in grade 10 I went and I, that's when I didn't know I'd like to talk about solving issues in the world and finding peace etc mm. but when I went the first time in grade 10 I got uh, the best delegate because I was really into it I was talking with my heart out as, I, as if I was representing my country so modern United Nations is you represent a country it's like a simulation and you get to talk about the issue they give you so ever since grade 10, I've been going consecutively each year to different MUNs. I've even been to one in Budapest. It was an international MUN. Yes. And I got an honorable mention. Um, so my experience was I got to know how to debate diplomatically, how to talk professionally if you're in this situation, because obviously I want to be in this field. So I want to know how, to, how people talk, how they communicate exactly, because it's not, it's not easy. Um, I also got to know so many things about the world 
because that's when I was invested to learn about what's happening around us, read the news every day. I was interested and more aware of things happening around me because of Modern United Nations. So, uh, Lujain, also uh, tell us more about your work today. As uh, you, have, you said that you work as a project coordinator in a development company. Tell me more about your job. Um, so I work as a proje assistant project coordinator in a development company. Basically, we always thrive to help the community, to help the society uh, by the projects we do. For example, we have a project focusing on the entrepreneurship ecosystem and how you help them grow as a startup. So our projects vary from like different perspectives, but the, the aim is to help basically the society and the communities and the country to grow and develop. Yes. Um, didn't you think about uh, joining uh, Egyptian Foreign Ministry to, to become an ambassador? I think you're a good candidate. <laughs> Thank you. Um, actually, I, I hope one day I'm still... You, you have know, this growing. idea in your mind? Yeah, I have. I have it. I'm just still growing and branching out to what I want to do. So I'm still growing and I don't know where I want to be. But my dream was always to be an ambassador ever since I decided I want to study international relations. Yes. So I was like, maybe one day I'll join the ministry or the foreign affairs. Um, the UN, maybe. <laughs> I'm just, I'm still trying to grow and explore. So uh, let's move now to talk about um, your uh, uh, hobbies and uh, what do you like to do in your life? Um, I have so many <laughs> extracurriculum activities, but apart from going to MUN, because I've stopped that, um, currently I play American football or flag football. Mm. Um, and it's a very entertaining game, it's very strategic. I've been playing it for two years now, but before that, um, I also loved playing basketball for four years um, and before that I played gym rhythmic gymnastics for like 12 years in my life um, and that's when I even coached a team. I was a, a coach after I left gymnastics so that's where I also experienced I like to teach. Um, I like to dance <laughs> a yes. lot yeah, because from rhythmic gymnastics mm. you, it's more of a dancing routine and you get to do so many things when you're doing the routine. So when I left it, I loved dancing and I continued dancing until now. So uh, Lujaini, tell me more about the importance of extracurricular activities. Um, basically, the activities that I've done is who I am. They shape my mind towards what I've always wanted to do. Hmm. Um, they teach you personal skills, communication skills, and even they teach you how to deal with people in general. Yes. And they give you this, you know, character that you don't get to see at schools. Because at schools, you get to see the education, the books, but extracurriculum show you life experience and skills that you don't get from just studying a book. So uh, if you uh, think about your dreams uh, or, or aspirations in life, uh, tell me more about uh, your ambitions and your goals. Um, Honestly, one day I hope, as I said, like to be in the UN one day and, um, you know, it's very cliche, but to world peace and world security. Um, I've always wanted to be in this field to just even focus locally more on helping those who cannot find someone to help them and help the community grow and develop. And also um, just continue who I am to be able to be successful in what I want. Yes. Uh, you said uh, in the beginning that your main uh, uh, studies at first were uh, in German language. Did you find yeah. it hard to shift and uh, study in English after that? And what uh, did you learn from the German culture? Um, honestly, from the German culture, I've learned how to be de determined and persistent because, you know, when, you, when you're in a German environment, you always have to be on the line. You have to do whatever you're asked for. And your head is very, you know, it's yes. like organized. Um, the reason I left German school was because I, I was a gymnast at that time and it yes. was hard to, you know, comp like be on the same level with both. It was mm -hmm. so hard to follow each because I had trainings until like 10, 10 p.m. or something and then I go to school so it wasn't easy but German school definitely made me determined and persistent and never give up on what I want to do. <laughs> So uh, let me go back to the point of American football. Uh, as a girl, it's not common uh, here in Egypt to find a girl who is practicing uh, football. Yeah. Uh, so uh, tell me more about it. Uh, do you join championships? Um, do, you need, do you think that we need to encourage um, young, uh, uh, young girls here in Egypt to join American football? Um, yeah, the game is really fun to be, and you can learn it. It's not, it's not easy at first, but then by time you get to learn the, you have two positions, either, either you're a receiver or you're in defense. Mm. So as a receiver, you get to catch the ball that's thrown from you, from the QB. 
Um, but both of them are very entertaining and you, get to, you need to focus on who's in front of you to be able to move in the field. And definitely, to, like, definitely I, I would suggest that we need to show the game more in Egypt and, and encourage other girls to join because it's not tackling. Um, for girls, it's flag football. Yes. You have a flag around you and then whoever takes the flag away, you just get, get to stop. So I definitely encourage people to start joining because I didn't know about it until two years ago. And when I did, it's mm -hmm. like the main thing for me now behind after my work. <laughs> And do you have a coach who, who, who can help you to practice uh, the yeah. sport? Uh, do you think that uh, here in Egypt that we have this attention to, uh, football, uh, to football games uh, when it comes to girls playing football? Um, no, but I would really love to stress on how it should grow as like, a, a game for girls because it's, it's more mainstream for guys. It's known even from the States, American football for guys. Yes. Our coaches are like men and they, they play in the men's team. Um, so they're very well experienced when they teach us, uh, but we should definitely support and encourage more girls to join the game and even to enlarge the game in our society because it should be more also for girls, not for men, because girls can do it even, I'm not going to say better, but they can even do it in different ways than just men, how they do it. Yes. Uh, going back to your current job uh, as a coordination, coordinator in a development uh, company, uh, how can you achieve your dreams uh, when it comes to working in a development company? Um, every time I feel like I've had an influence on someone's life, every time I felt like I made a change through the projects that we do, I feel like I have achieved something. Every time someone came to me during events or projects and they told me, thank you so much for helping us, something inside me moves and I'm like, I've achieved something towards my dreams. It's like, my goal was always to make a change for someone's life, to help them, to help them find what they want. Um, even if they, they don't have a shelter or they don't have a job, they wanna start their business, just giving them a simple bean, they, then they're gonna grow it. So. Just having the influence on someone was enough for me. Though uh, your job is not currently related to international relations. Um, it's kind of a sector, no. Like They're all under political science, but then you get to be divided, international relations, all Middle Eastern studies. So it's kind of related. Like In my, my major, I took social studies, and I took political theory. So in social studies actually was the most interesting subject for me. And when I got the opportunity to work in social development, I was like, I'm going to take the chance. Yes. And uh, show break the viewers, and we'll be back. Welcome back, uh, dear viewers, and uh, we are still uh, hosting uh, Lujain Adib, and she is uh, uh, telling us uh, more about her career in life and her goals and achievements after studying international relations in uh, Budapest. So uh, going back uh, to your life uh, in Budapest, and you find that studying international relations in Budapest is a little bit different from studying here, or uh, they are almost the same? Um, I would say almost the same when I used to talk to my friend who studies the same major here and yes. I used to tell her what are the subjects that we're taking mm -hmm. she was like oh we're taking the same the difference is about the method of teaching like for me there it was more captivating because they made you including in, uh, included in every subject they made you even do um, seminars and mm -hmm. and experience like they even got us diplomats back there in my school they used to get diplomats to talk to us and tell us how is how is it being a diplomat, for instance? So for me, the difference is the method of teaching, but the, the curriculum is exactly the same. Maybe just a difference that you're in Europe, um, so they teach you more about Europe, and here in Egypt, they teach you more Egyptian history. Yes. So it's where the region is. Yes. And do you have any plans to uh, pursue uh, your international uh, relations career and do a master's or a PhD in this field? 
Yeah, I'm hoping to do a master's degrees, uh, hopefully soon, but I'm, I get to change a bit to political sociology. Cause this that, is related more to your work now. Yeah, I found they're all again under the umbrella of political science because then it's all politics. Mm. So it's I studied international relations. It was an international scale, but then I found that that I want to be more focused locally and more like inside. So y your main aim is to serve the society. Yeah. Now you have this target in your mind. Yeah, and, and I don't think it's been changing for a while. <laughs> And uh, tell me more, how can you do that uh, through your development projects? I, I need you to be more focused on this issue. Um, you said that it, yeah, it's a startup project. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it has just been started recent. No, no. One of the projects is we, we focus on in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Hmm. So basically, um, you had those... Ecosystem, you said. Yeah. The so it's about saving the environment. Uh, no, no, entrepreneurial ecosystem. So it's more towards people's... Like, people. Oh, yes. Yeah. So for instance, they want to... They have a startup idea and they don't know where to go from there. Um, you help... You guide them how to enlarge their, their idea. You help them grow as in a startup. You, you give so them... So you give ideas... You uh, give them like exper expertise, you teach them sessions, how to To grow. young entrepreneurs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And this, I, uh, this is related to uh, eco uh, eco the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Ecosystem. Yeah. Yes. So uh, you, feel, uh, you feel that you are achieving your dreams when you come, when it comes to helping uh, others to start their, uh, their own job. This is currently what you are doing, right? Um, this is part of what I'm doing. Like, this yes. is a huge part, but it's, it's in many different sectors and not just in the entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial ecosystem. Like, yes. Um, you give them, well, basically, yeah, the focus now is you provide them job opportunities by just making them open their own startups. Hmm. You're not opening anything from them. You're just guiding them how to grow it. Um, you're giving them sessions, how to um, m like do a business plan, for instance, how to um, meet the right marketing investors or hmm. something. So this is just a small part of what we do. Yes. Yeah. And you said that your aspirations and your uh, ambitions is someday you can join the foreign ministry or work in a political uh, You have a political career, right? Yeah. This is what you are planning for. Yeah. <laughs> and are you preparing yourself to this? Yeah. Um, I've been thinking about joining the Foreign Ministry of Affairs exam to be able to yes, be an ambassador. I think you need to prepare for it. Yeah. You need like a year to be studying because it's in three languages. Mm. So for me, I've been thinking about it recently a lot that I want to join the exam because you have it until the 27, mm. the age of 27. So maybe it's time to start now and taking it because yes. it's not an easy one. Yes. Uh, I, finally, I'd like to thank you, uh, Lujain Aldib. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for you. And uh, by that, uh, dear viewers, uh, we come to the end of today's edition of Today's Youth. Thank you for watching.